Greetings everybody and welcome to this second part uh, of the tutorial on texturing and lighting in FreeCAD. In this second part we will um, do a quick uh, recap of what we've di uh, we did in the first part and uh, we'll quickly go over the lighting's uh, option and hopefully we'll uh, manage to do a indoor scene if we have the time remaining. So let's quickly go into the part workbench we'll um, add three cubes and uh, for this I will show you a different way of managing our tree view in a way that it's easier to um, have a hold of uh, what's going uh, on. I uh, didn't uh, make uh, a copy of the first cube although uh, we will change its uh, dimensions because uh, if you remember we have the bug where we can't rotate the textures on the faces so we'll go over our first cube. The first thing that we'll need to do is to change its dimension. I'll choose one meter by one meter by one meter. We'll do the same with the second cube and the third one. Next let's see our whole scene and we'll change the placement of our cubes. Zoom to see our whole scene. Next we will clean a bit our tree view and we'll create three new groups for ordering objects. One, two and three. We'll rename this as cube, cube one and again cube two. We'll put our cubes uh, inside each folder and expand our tree view. Choose your first cube, go into your data tab, you choose show all, we'll add a, pro a property, material, group base, name material and we will do the same for our uh, free cubes. What we need to do next is to go into the arc workbench, select our first cube, I'll add a material, click add material, I want to choose my preset, wood, and click OK. Choose your second cube, add a material, choose a preset, I want the second one to be something like concrete generic, generic, OK, we'll choose the third for third cube we'll add a material and I want something like steel okay next select the first cube we'll add a texture config for our cube grab your texture config and move it into the first folder double click on the texture config add the material wood is correct, I'll add a texture and I'll give a dimension to my texture, click OK and then hide the texture. I would like to rotate my texture on this face of the cube, so I click the texture config in the tree view, go into override default mapping choose 90 degrees and click apply. Of course we first need to select a face. Apply. We'll go into our second cube, we'll add the texture config, move your texture config into its folder, double click on the texture config, we'll add a material, I choose the second material that I want, it uh, is the concrete one for the second cube, I'll choose my texture. Click OK and unhide the texture in the tree view. Again, select your texture config, modify the mapping options, 
I'll select my face. I want to rotate it by 90 degrees. Apply. And close this dialog. For our third cube, uh, we'll do quite a cool thing. So uh, we'll select our third cube. We'll add the texture config. The usual drill. Double click on the texture config. We'll add a material. For this one, I want to select the steel one. And as a texture, I'll go ahead and choose a PNG texture with um, some uh, alpha channel applied. I'll give it its correct dimensions. Click OK and unhide our texture. We see that uh, the, the alpha channel for our texture is um, correctly displayed. And another thing um, to be praised is the fact that having some good quality normal maps for our texture yield such a good um, result in um, the 3D viewport. The fact that we, we use uh, folders uh, for organizing our tree view is of great help because as you can see we can hide and unhide objects and in a complex scene we don't have to go and hunt for a respective uh, texture config. Next I will add another cube We'll go through the usual drill of adding a folder. I'll put my cube into this folder. I'll uh, choose my cube. Next we'll go over some um, lighting um, options in this workbench and we'll see how uh, they influence the texture rendering. Uh, so we have two options, we have a point light and a directional light and we'll see this um, more in detail in the third part where we'll uh, create an outdoor scene. Let's try first the point light option. The point light has a color option and we can, can choose a color for our um, light. We have an intensity option and we can see how the intensity affects our lighting and the location option. Let's try to raise this light up by 1000 millimeters. If we have some uh, good quality normal maps, uh, the direction of the, lab, uh, of the light influences a great deal how our, how our textures are rendered on the screen. Of course we can hide or unhide our lights. Let's try the directional light. This will automatically add a sun-like um, light into our scene. We have some greater control over the directional light. We can of course choose our color. And to better see how our light influences our scene, we better select our point light and shut it off. Let's choose the directional light. We have a horizon option. This option can simulate the rise and su sunset of the sun. And we, have, we also have a vertical option and try to set this at zero and see how the vertical option influences our lighting in the scene. the moment of doing this tutorial there are only these two type of lights uh, in the um, workbench but uh, they can be used uh, for a better illumination of our 3D view helping to better visualize 3D assemblies and I will illustrate that uh, just now. I'm adding a directional light I'll choose an intensity of 0.5 and I'll play with the horizon and vertical position of the light.
and as promised we will go ahead and compose it a indoor scene thank you for your attention and i'll see you in the next tutorial cheers everybody and happy engineering Thank you. 